Yes, we're gonna go over fiddlesticks, and yes, he's creepy. Yes, he's disgusting. Yes, he makes me wanna vomit. However, he is really, really good right now, and you should pick him up for some of that free low. In this guide, we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know just to pick him up to get into those games and start climbing the League of Legends ladder. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Let's start by asking why you should play fiddlesticks. Well, first of all, he's super cool. He's super scary and super fun and really creepy to look at. His aesthetics are just awesome, but what about his kit? Well, with a simple effective kit that is remarkably familiar to the old fiddlesticks, he's easy to pick up and has clearly stood the test of time. If you like the time to really get into the nitty gritty of a champion's mechanics, then fiddlesticks is a great choice for you because he's an easy champion to pick up right where you left off and is certainly more rewarding than a rusty Lee Sin. I know that more than anybody. Please editors, don't show them my match history. Now revamped to be more on pace with the modern League of Legends champ pool, he offers that much more to his faithful summoners. Despite being fragile and not looking the part, Fiddlesticks can be powerful in a variety of situations, always offering incredible crowd control no matter the game or opposition. Throw in the fact that he can fit multiple roles and he's a perfect fit for both casual and competitive ranked players. And when it really gets down to it, Fiddlesticks is just plain awesome. Raw fear is something that League of Legends has been missing for a while, and the new Fiddlesticks is here to give us a lot of that. Whether it's through his appearance or frightening Crow Storm, Fiddlesticks is sure to hand out heart attacks by the dozen on Summoner's Rift. Prior to his rework, Fiddlesticks' approach to the game was rather narrow. You'd hide in Fog of War, cast Crow Storm, and hope the enemy had no counter. Nowadays, Summoners will have a lot more strengths to play with. Firstly, he has a great new scouting tool in the form of an effigy that doubles as a ward and pseudo-scanner. Not only does it make early pathing more meaningful, but it also adds that extra mind game for the enemy team. Secondly, his fear feels far more rewarding with a powerful passive, and damage modifier built into a new skill shot based ability. Rather than a point and click raw disable, you can now deal damage and have access to crowd control from the entirety of your kit, something that always makes champions really strong, especially in the right hands. When you get into the drain from Bountiful Harvest, it's far less clunky and allows for more meaningful skill expression in both skirmishes and teamfights. Most importantly, Fiddlesticks feels like he can be played anywhere. Similar to before, Fiddlesticks can be played in numerous roles, including jungle, mid, support, and maybe one day top lane. Who knows, maybe I'll be the first top lane Fiddlesticks main. Ooh, that'll be fun. Autofill won't be getting the best of you anymore. Although there's a lot of good stuff that I've been saying, the bad stuff about Fiddlesticks and his old problems remain. Fiddlesticks still suffers from more aggressive champions that can get onto him in the blink of an eye. Champions like Jarvin or Olaf, who really stick easily, will always make it a tough day for this ancient fear. Okay, now let's go into the abilities. Well, starting off with his passive. Fiddlesticks Trinket has been replaced by Scarecrow Effigies. You can have two active at once, creating nearly identical targets of the terrifying Scarecrow. Fiddlesticks' Effigies regularly function as wards, but double with a twist as dummies. When discovered, Fiddlesticks' dummies will emulate his actions, be it a Crow Storm or regular, old auto attack, potentially catching his opponents off guard. Also at level 6, Fiddlesticks' Effigies reveal wards when placed, effectively tripling as a scanner or vision ward. Okay, now onto his Q, which is called Terrify. Fiddlesticks' new Terrify ability comes with both a passive and active portion. The passive part of this ability stipulates that if Fiddlesticks lands an ability while out of combat and vision, he will fear the enemy, causing them to flee. When Terrify is activated, Fiddlesticks shoots a bolt at an enemy, dealing damage and fearing the target. If the target has been feared recently by Fiddlesticks' passive, Terrify will also deal double the damage. A key thing to note about Fiddlesticks' Terrify ability is that it easily procs the Aftershock Keystone, granting Fiddlesticks the ability to further tank attacks or abilities for a short amount of time. Fiddlesticks' Terrify passive also does not discriminate between singular or multiple targets, meaning that his AoE abilities will proc the fear on multiple champions, making for devastating Crow Storm plays. On the logistics side of things, Fiddlesticks will have to wait before he can fear a target again, but this is made clear by a circle indicator below enemy champions. Okay, now let's go on to his W, Bountiful Harvest. Gone are the days of Fiddlesticks' goofy singular target drain. Moving into the future, Fiddlesticks will have the ability to drain multiple targets. When activated, Fiddlesticks drains the souls of nearby enemy champions for two seconds, 
dealing bonus damage based on the target's missing health percentage at the end of the ability if the tether remains unbroken. Just like before, Fiddlesticks will heal a percentage of damage dealt during the duration of the ability. If there is nothing to harvest once the channel is complete, 60% of the ability's cooldown is refunded. While the ability is fairly straightforward in game mechanics, there are still a few things to remember, similar to Fiddlesticks' old drain ability. Just like before, using stasis effects like Stopwatch or Zanya's Hourglass will cancel Bountiful Harvest's channel. There is also no limit to how many targets can be drained with Bountiful Harvest. Fiddlesticks can drain 50 minions, 6 champions, or 1,000 poros, you name it. On top of that, the ability can be used for a huge informational advantage as well. Notice how Fiddlesticks' Bountiful Harvest cannot be activated unless there is a target nearby. If you are face checking and the ability can be cast, there is someone hiding in the bush. This can really help when scouting enemy territory at any point in the game. Okay, now let's get on to his E, which is called Reap. Naturally, living around abandoned barns has caused Fiddlesticks to abandon his dead crows for a deadly AoE scythe. Fiddlesticks' ability Reap deals damage in front of him in a crescent shape, silencing those in the center of the ability. Similar to the rest of his kit, it can fear if used from Fog of War, however the Reap has a sizable cast time that makes it difficult to hit targets that are not crowd controlled in any way. Despite being the simplest part of Fiddlesticks' kit, Reap still has a bit of nuance regarding its active hitbox. Although it appears to slash from left to right, Reap actually hits across the whole crescent instantly, meaning you can aim it any way that will hit the enemy champion. Okay, now here comes the big one. The Crow Storm has been Fiddlesticks' namesake ability since the ultimate regularly crashed games during League of Legends alpha testing. Similar to before, Fiddlesticks channels his ultimate for 1.5 seconds before blinking to a target location and dealing damage in a large AoE radius for 5 seconds. If that sounds exactly the same as the previous Fiddlesticks ultimate, that is because it is. Still, there are a few refreshers for people who might not be as familiar with the Ancient Fear. Unlike Bountiful Harvest, stasis effects like Stopwatch or Zanya's Hourglass won't halt Crowstorm after it has been activated, meaning that you can deal huge amounts of damage while completely untouchable during two seconds of your ultimate. There is also no movement lock after using Crowstorm, meaning that you can close the gap even more with a Flash, Hextech Protobelt, or even Thresh's Dark Passage. While Fiddlesticks' ultimate is largely the same, there are a few things that you should be aware of. First, the AoE from Crowstorm can proc Fiddlesticks' Terrify passive, fearing everyone damaged. Secondly, this is a big one. All enemies nearby Fiddlesticks will have a red indicator appear above their avatar while he is channeling his ultimate. Apart from the new fear mechanic and a slight loss in the element of surprise, you can count on Crowstorm to be used almost exactly the same way as it was before. Okay, now let's get into the combos. Fiddlesticks has a whole new kit, but it's undeniable that Crowstorm will still be very much at the center of his gameplay. That in mind, there are a few things you want to look out for when Crowstorming with this iteration of the champion. Hitting enemy champions with a tick of Crowstorm is as important as ever with the fear mechanic attached to Terrify. So always keep Flash in mind to close the gap even further for some crucial crowd control. If you need to target down someone further, Terrify is a great follow-up to Crowstorm for a fear and even more significant damage. If that isn't enough, you typically want to follow that up with Reap to guarantee the silence after they escape the initial crowd control. Basically, you have the power to make someone have little to no fun every team fight. In situations where you're the primary initiation, using Bountiful Harvest to buy time before using Zanya's Hourglass can squeeze the most possible damage out of Crowstorm. When ganking without Crowstorm, the approach will typically begin from a lane brush to best use the passive fear from Terrify. Ideally, you'd be able to follow up or initiate with a Reap to silence and fear the opposing champion. After getting this combo off, it's pretty easy to Terrify for double damage and finish off the opponent with auto attacks and bountiful harvest. In situations where you want to be a little bit more sneaky without using Crowstorm, the approach is practically the same. As you lie and wait in a river brush, you reap for the initial silence and fear, followed up by the act of terrify before using Bountiful Harvest for the full effect and juicy health percentage damage. Okay, now without further ado, here are a few ways that Fiddlesticks can best hit the rift. As mentioned before, the terrifying Scarecrow can be a bit of a Swiss army knife, using different tools in different situations for maximum efficiency. At the forefront of all of Fiddlesticks' roles is his well-known home in the jungle. 
For the most part, Fiddlesticks Jungle will play in a very similar way. You start Hunter's Talisman and focus on completing your Runic Echo's jungle item in addition to a Zanya's Hourglass. You also have the option of a few keystones based on team composition, but Predator makes for the easiest ganks, as you'll see in our next potential role. Now, Fiddlesticks hasn't been thoroughly tested in the mid lane, but it has always found a way to occasionally pop up in solo queue. Theoretically, you could choose the Predator Keystone and take Minion Dematerializer from the Inspiration Tree to target down two melee minions and one caster minion. The idea is that together with Bountiful Harvest fully maxed out and Hextech Protobelt, you will be able to fully clear a wave and quickly roam to a side lane. Meanwhile, there is one other position that Fiddlesticks tends to shine at, and that is support. Even at the highest level of play, this easily has been Fiddlesticks' most successful role. In this new iteration of Fiddlestick support, you'll want to max Reap for the highest AoE damage and build Luden's Echo, Zanya's Hourglass, and Leandri's Torment to supplement an AP caster build. Leandri's will depend on team composition and magic resist purchases from the opposing team, but it's a fairly safe item to buy in the current meta. For playstyle, you want to take Arcane Comet as your keystone and focus slowly poking down the enemy in lane while fearing anybody that tries to gank or get on top of your AD carry. Aftershock is also worth considering in situations where the enemy has multiple champions that can easily close the gap on you and your carries. Traditionally, this has been the strongest keystone in competition, but both have seen a fair amount of play. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. As you guys know, we are filming in my apartment right now instead of the studio. If you guys have been affected by the coronavirus and you're feeling a little bit isolated or a little bit alone, feel free to add me and connect with me on my Instagram. I check it often and I connect with a lot of you guys there. If you guys want to get better at League of Legends, go to ProGuides.com. Go find a challenger coach right now. They'll help you out. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift.